ministers that lag to be in this service. One more time. They would say he didn't have to let me live. Live to be in the service. One more time. How many folks let me in the service? No man should be able to stand before you all the days of your life. All right. 
As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you, nor forsake you. And then he says, he says, watch what the body says, be strong and of good courage. For to this people right. you should divide and as an inheritance in the land, which I swore to their fathers to give them. And then he says again, only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it. Do not turn from it to the left hand, to the right hand, or to the left, yes. that you may prosper wherever you go. Yes, God. Apostle, I just want to talk to you. If you give me about 10, 15 minutes, it won't be no longer. It's a lot of prophetic stuff that God showed me oh, this. First of all, he sets the time up. And I understand this. He says, your servant Moses is dead. All right. And when he did that, he made a time stamp. He made a time stamp. I'm going to show you what the time stamp looked like. Anybody ever lost a mom or a daddy or a grandparent? All right. You can always say, well, mama died, dad. Oh. All right. you, don't, you may forget the year the mama or granddaddy died in, but you can always say, when they died, around, somewhere around that time, my life changed. Yes, sir. Anybody understand? Anybody ever lost somebody? And you can tell around that time something happened. Right. And so when he said, he said, look here. It was probably 30 days after Moses' death. Well. According to what Duna Rumble said. All right. So it's probably 30 days afterwards. He said, now the morning is over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's time to go to work. Well. And what he says is, now watch this. So he, he, he gives him a time. And now he says in verse 2, he says, Now therefore, arise. <laughs> All right. Huh. Yeah. All now, what I, do, I like about God is when he speaks, right. he gives a direction. Amen. He just don't tell you to do nothing. He just don't. He just don't. He gives instruction on yeah. what to do. He told Moses. He told Moses what to do. He told Abraham what to do. He right. told Noah what to do. Every time God gives a word, Amen. He gives instruction. Yeah. He gave you a word. He told you to be on my father's business. Yeah. And he probably gave you some direction on how to do it. When the Lord told me in 19, I was in college in 1999, he told me to start Lighthouse Ministry. I didn't have anybody. It was not this. It was not this. It was none of us together. I was a senior in college in a dorm room or an apartment room, and the Lord told me to start a ministry. And he told me to write. And every time he would speak, I would write. Right. So the first five years I wrote. Lord. Somebody didn't hear this. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Come on. Yeah, yeah. The first five years was writing. Right. And then he told me to open a bank account Lord. with no money. And he would tell me how to go and sell money to other people through that bank account. Lord. There were no people. There was no choir. There was no ministerial step. Right. There was me and Shemekah. There was no Ashton and no Hannah there. It was just me and Shamika. All right. So when God gives a direction, when he gives a word, he gives a direction. Huh. Now, what I like about this, he says that every place the sole of your foot will trade it. I have given you, as I said to Moses, I'm, I'm going to work this real good for you. I bought a house on that scripture. All right. All right. The realtor started calling me and Shemika every time she got a new client because she said, I saw this man work this scripture. We walked into our house and we claimed it. All right. All right. 
and I would walk around the props. You know what you do? I said, the Bible declared that everywhere the foot of my, the fault is on my feet, yes. he had given me that. She was even a believer. Now watch this. That opened the door for ministry. All right. Because every client she started getting from that point, she told them to call me. All right. Because she saw the scripture in action. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm going somewhere because the Lord told me some percentage for you. He said he has given you this territory. Now I need you to understand me when I said that he says no to the preachers in the room, don't get offended. It's not. I want to make sure you understand it. It's a territory thing. It's spiritual. It's not buildings. He didn't give you his church or his church or his church. He's giving you this territory to war in the spirit for the people of God. I begin to understand this thing because I begin to ask God, I say, God, but see, when you walk into the apostolic, not the domination. Let's don't even go there. We're going to talk about the apostolic. When you walk into this apostolic, God gives you a pioneer move. Amen. All right. And one day I was there, I was sitting down, and the Lord began to talk to me about trees and roads. He said, every road that you see now, there was trees. But somebody had to cut them down. Somebody had to go in there and cut it down, move the road, and put a road through. That was a lot of hard work. But guess now, what was hard work to kill that kind of road? 526. It's well, easy now. Well. But somebody came in and, and cut the trees down. Somebody had to come in there and pull the trees up to grind up and get somebody to bring gravel in. That was a lot of work. And I can guarantee you, it was not always paid. So God has assigned you the territories. And one thing you have to know too, you have to know, you gotta know your territory. All right. So he watched this. He says, everywhere you walk, just as I told Moses, I'm telling you, it's yours. Now, this is what I like about it because you have a brand new ministry. It's not like you birthed this thing. It wasn't like most of us when I birthed Lighthouse, but St. Paul. It was established. It's 102 years old. All right. So I had to go with him and just reteach. Reteach some things. Encourage some things. And get them to because I told him, he said, I've given you this territory. Now what you gotta realize is when God gives you territory. <coughs> Everybody might not sit in your church, but they recognize your voice. So we, 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 we're moving. We're moving to Joshua sees this promise that God had given Moses, and I like about this because Joshua just showed up on the scene, kind of like me and you just showed up. There was a call and we answered. We just kind of showed up. Now watch this, watch this. I'm almost done because it's not a, it's, this is really for him. Now watch this. Back in Exodus chapter 12. I'm sorry, chapter 17. We found this, this particular scripture talking about this war is getting ready, this battle is getting ready. And Moses is getting ready to fight. And I like this, he tells. Joshua. This is in verse 10. He, so Joshua did as Moses said and fought the Amalekites. So Moses and Aaron went up to the top of the hill. Watch this. In this process, in this season, you're going to need someone that understands and pray with you. It's not always be your wife. I'm not in my position. If there's some place that I go, my wife can't go. What I like about this particular, this right here is because
There's a battle going on. Yes, all right. <laughs> and God has commanded you to keep your hands lifted. Yes. Because when I lift my hands to you, I get myself out of the way. I can't fix the problem when my hands are lifted. Right. Yes, sir. It's a place to submit. Mm -hmm. And there may be some people here that's out there while you while they're out in battle, your hands is just lifted. Yes. Yeah. This is what the Lord gave me. I'm sorry, but He just told me to tell you right. to keep your hand lifted. There was not an always or. Reggie McKinnon or Demetri Postel or Terrence Burke or better yet an Apostle White with me because there was a time when I was by myself and I was losing. Yes. Oh. Yes. There was an hour with a Kim, a, a Kim Evangelist or a Pastor Kennedy. There was a time when I, I was doing everything God had but God had to send me some help. Oh. And I had to wait on this thing. But when I was doing that, I said, God, whatever you want me. I was doing whatever I could do and God started sending the help. Yes. So he said, come on here. Come on here. Come on her. And what they started to realize is, Reggie says, we see what he does. We see that he's a servant. I don't have to tell them something. They just automatically know now. I don't have to ask for it sometimes. There's some things that they just already move because they know what vein that we're moving in. All right. For instance, like the day Kim, Amanda Jordan, she preached, shift, transition, and the God. That's what the church at right now. That's what the ministry is. She preached the other Sunday. We've all preached that same thing. Amanda is cool, but we've all preached it because we're in the same vein. All right. It's yes. only one voice in the church. Yeah. All right. Oh, my God. Yes, sir. Aaron and her realized. <laughs> that as long as Moses' hand, because you know your hand get heavy sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because we carry the weight of the people on our shoulders. Yeah. It, ain't, it ain't all great to be a pastor. Uh, I'm going to talk to you when that's all. It ain't all fun being a pastor. There's a lot of midnight cries. There's hospital runs. There's funeral runs. There's evangelistic runs. There are calls because you do want your pastor at 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Oh. This time she got to share you with the whole church. There are times when she want to do things and we have to say, can we just try to rebalance that for a moment? Because you know what this is going to be the outcome if we don't move like this. All right. So they saw him get tired. And they lifted his arms up. Right. All right. They said as long as his hand, this makes me emotional. But as long as it's here, yeah. we win. Yeah. Brother, you got to hold his hand up. All right. And they realize something. They say, hey, this is getting a little hard for us to stand here with him and hold his hand up. Let's just get, let's get a rock and some get them over yeah. there. You realize that it's a problem to keep his hand up. So let's sit him down. Uh -huh. yes, Put that rock on top of his shoulder. Uh -huh. Yeah. And hold his hand up. Uh, they got to say, by any means necessary, yeah. Yeah. we got to pump the man of God up now. Yeah. I don't know how we're going to do it. I don't know if we get in time. We got to stay here oh, and hold his hand up. Oh, my. Oh, my. I'm going to say this about all business. Wow. My Lord. Keep his hands lifted. Oh, because when his hands is lifted, oh, he's lifting you up in prayer. Yeah. Yes, when his hand is lifted, Keep living your hands up in prayer. Amen. Keep his hands lifted. Keep his hands. Where I was thinking about this on the way in. And I had to be cautious the way I said things because people take offense. Yeah. To hold us up, I said no. Yeah. But Kenny and Nathan kept your hands up. Jesus. And God said, now you walk side. Yes, Lord. You gotta find somebody that'll prop your hands up. 
See, folks don't understand why Rawls are in Santa used to ride with you and nobody else would go because Kenny had your hands up. They named it when, when y'all were on the road because they had your hands up. They can talk a good game, but they can't keep your hands lifted up. They can see everything wrong with it, they can't keep your hands lifted up. Apostle, let me tell you something. This young man messed me up in prayer. He's probably older than I am. But he's a young man, like I am. Was a servant. We're the biggest servant ever. Amen. It doesn't matter about what title we wear. All right. When I go places, they say, how do you want me to introduce you? I said, just tell them I'm a servant. All right. Amen. We've got to keep serving the people. There's a change going on. There's shifting going on. And God said, the people have got to be served. The people have to be served. There's a work going on out there. People want the title. They want to be called pastors. They want to be called this and that. But they don't do any work. They don't want to do the work. I was laughing because you were talking and I was reflecting as I was listening to we were at a place, my wife and I, she had lost her grandmother. And there was a white dude that we had met through Kenya and her sister. And God told me to bring him home with him. I said, bring him home with us, Lord. I don't know this man. He said, bring him home with you. And we brought him home with us. I was like Sandra Willard. I was excited, my wife was like, oh, no. Bring the baby in the room and like everything, put the knives up. We had the knives in the room. But God said, you got to show folks who Christ is. All right, all right. It don't matter if you're black or white, green or blue. Amen. See, to show who Christ looks like. Yeah. Yes. What did I know about him? He has no color and he has no respect of person. Yeah. He lost us all up in yeah. Yes, sir. So, Apostle, when your hand gets hard tied, and you can't see your way. Because people think, oh, because you're an apostle, that's good. You know what? And I told you, we shared this. The last two years has been nothing but persecution for me. All right, I've had to fight. My church in Europe, I have to fight. They're the only folks. They 75 plus down there, 55 to 75. And they should be the best days of their life. But they're fighting for the kingdom. Because they have a pastor as a pastor. That folks don't even understand that. I didn't ask for this. Yes. And I made my mind up. I'm just joking at the end of the day. Because the work going to stand for me. You ain't got to like it, but the work's going to stand for me. Yep. So God has given you a direction to rise. Take the territory. One thing I know about God, every hindrance he'll move it. But then how you know? Let me tell you how I know personally. My grandfather was the chairman of the deacon board at St. Paul. And he'll get up and, boy, you, 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 missed, you, you missed the offer, but the spirit is moving, Papa Joe. All right. My dad looked at me and he smiled. A couple months later, he was in the nursing home. All right. Me and my daddy celebrated God because he didn't kill it. And he kept in the nursing home for six years. All right. And the church moved. All right. And it kept moving. And it kept moving. And it kept, this is my grandfather I'm talking about. I'm not talking about nobody. My grandfather. God has a plan. If we just get you a few good men. All right. Just keep your hand lifted. They don't, they don't get tired. 
But what they're talking about, they can get creative by keeping your hands lifted. All right. They'll find a way to keep your hands lifted. All right. They'll find a way to do things for you. They'll find a way to help you out. It's a change coming. And I heard the man say, I can tell you, he said, don't despise small again. Amen. All right. We started with six people. Six. Was never supposed to be a church. Me, Postel, Chris Willis, and the Kirks. It's called coming. You know they came because your family came. From the north, as far as that one. To the south, so to the north, as far as Babino. They to the west, back to Canaan, and they coming. All right. It's the Lord's doing. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Because one thing about me, I love them right where they at. And I know how to get on that level and love them where they at. Because I have to show the love of Christ. So when your hands get weary, you can't find your way. Keep your hands lifted. And keep your eye towards heaven. Yes. Keep your ears open to God. Because there are some things he want to tell you. My brother would tell me like this, eyes haven't seen, boy. I'm not talking about you who tell me, boy. Ears haven't heard. No, has it in the heart of man the things that God prepared for those who love him. And he said, boy, there's got to be some great things that God prepared. Apostle, there's some great things that God prepared for us. That you can't even comprehend right now. There'll be some things that God will tell you to do that you're not going to even understand. But I go, I, I go on my know what they huh? But the Holy Ghost says, do it. Yeah. It might not make sense to me or my wife or to the, to the people that keep my but when, when my Noah said move, well, I gotta move now. Uh -huh. When my Noah said work, then I gotta yeah, work. God. Yeah, God. When my Noah said do, I gotta do. Yeah. When my Noah said build, I gotta build. Yeah. When the Holy Ghost on the inside of me rises up and says, just go. Yes. Wow. If I pass, it's my super mind. And I go. Yeah. My guy said, go, who would go? Ah. Send me. I'll go. The church, I may be mothers, I may be fathers. If the Lord needs someone, here am I. Send me, God, I'll go. Nobody want to go no more. Quick while I still go. Apostle, with no money in my pocket, I still go. And I see God make provisions. Get ready. How I learned this from the Lord until the Lord told me anything that grow up fast dies fast. I'm going to say it again. Anything that grow up fast dies fast. You need folks that are going to come in and start on the ground with you and just work it with you. They might not always see it, but they just trust the things that's out of you. But look, when I realized God told them what people are doing now, they were coming to vision, and not to church. I'm going to say this. They're not coming to church. They're coming to vision. They're going to see the vision inside of you. I didn't know anybody in one girl that just knew the vision. So we keep our heads there. I don't know how to do it. But my hands are lifted. And as long as my hands are lifted, my father bears his wings. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, hmm. yes Lord. Yes. As long as my hands are lifted, lighthouse wins. Yes. As long as my hands are lifted, St. Paul wins. Yes. Yes. Let me just give you a personal testimony. I know the Lord's going to keep me, and I'll, I'll take my I got to go. 
But we've seen two miracles in our church this week. Yes, two. Yes. I didn't even tell the church to miss it because she was proud of her situation. I don't do that. But we saw her. We saw God turn her situation around. Yes. Yes. Around. Yes. We saw Brother Hall turn around. Yes. From a tumor with cancer, who died of a tumor with cancer, to just infection. Yes. Right. If you tell me I want to keep my hands up.
in this season that God gave me, and it begin to shift lives around us. Every church is beginning to start to change because God said, I'm calling the church back to his first to the first love. I'm calling you back to me. I'm calling you everybody, the body of Christ. When the body of Christ arrives, they come back home to me. Yeah. When you come back home to me, I'm calling you home. Right. Don't worry about your agenda, whatever. Just come home to me. We may not do it all the same way, and that's fine, that's fine. But then you come home and we are the body of Christ. We're men and women for one body. And that means that we're not going to all do it the same. But we have one come and go, and that's Jesus Christ. It makes me cry. The way I see the church divided. It hurts my heart. Yes. I don't talk about no preachers. Right. Whatever you do is your business. Wow. Hey, when you run your house, it's your business. I don't talk about it. I don't put my mouth on no church. But I'm praying that say, God, send your glory back to the church. Right. Just send your glory back to the church. My daddy told me, no one they got Holy Ghost on it. If they do praise and worship, I won't hold the ghost on it. If they want to heal, I won't hold the ghost on it. If they want, if they read a scripture, I won't hold the ghost on it. But whatever they do, put the Holy Ghost on it. Yes. Huh. I'm done. I'm gonna tell you this. I'm Baptist in the court, and I want y'all to know that I'm really Baptist. We do well, there's a healing we word to serve this present age. I hear some magic folks over there. My calling to fulfill. Oh man, all my power gave to do my master's will. And I had to ask God, I said, the church ain't just, they're not serving this present age. Keep my hands lifted. We want to do it the way they did it in 1960. That won't work. Come on, come on. Well, that's how, that's how our mamas and daddies did it. Right. There was no lie for that. It was good for mama and daddy to do right. But there ain't no lie for me. Wow. My son ain't going to move the way I move. All right, son. Can I show you just one reason right. how we serve this present age? Huh. I can preach a message on Facebook. In our church, I have about 75 to 80 people in it. But by the week, I have about 600 views. They're not coming to the church. We don't go live on Sunday, folks inboxing me. Not from Montgomery. From Georgia. From Florida. From Mississippi. Folks that I don't even know. Why are y'all down this Sunday? We don't know how to serve this present age. All right. Facebook is the devil. Yeah. It is not the devil. It's the devil that is due to you to make it be the devil. Yeah. I could preach a message on Facebook and get 3,000 views. Yeah. <laughs> we got to keep our hands lifted. I'm sorry, Paul. I just got a little. We got to keep our hands lifted. Yeah. You gotta know how to make things happen for the kingdom. God will get, we listen to God, He's trying to give us new direction, fresh revelation. Let me do this real quick. Let's go home. Take me to church. Take me to church. There's to be a wind change in here. And I hear the Lord say, I'm going to shift your life like it never before. And all I'm going to say is, I'm going to ask the wind of the Lord to blow in this building now. On everybody in this room, there's like a second wind that's going to happen. And you're going to ask me, what is that second wind that's like? When my son runs track, and we travel all over the place, and when he can't see his way, I get on the track beside him, and I say, boy, you can do this now. And he responds to me, I'm about to throw up. I said, forget about it. Keep running now. Yourself inside. There's a voice inside of you that needs to be yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to give you a second wind now. I need you to blow wind. 
Thank you.